It's going down, team. Toby here from Hadler Fitness. So what we're going through today is muscle growth, which is going to be stimulated by chasing the pump. So chasing the pump is a style of training where you basically just either training till failure or training till you feel that muscle burn, you feel the muscle contraction and cellular, cellular walls within the muscle fibers really swell up. So you get a lot of sacroplasmic hypertrophy, a lot of swelling in the uh, muscle fiber cell. So this is what we're talking about. So this is the training method that the bros have been using for years. All right, so we're going to get right into it. So this is a study here. going to be going through today so personally on a, on a side note like I'd like to start the video off on I really like this style of training going in just not worrying about anything just going and getting it done and like going my hardest that's that's why I like this style of training it's not for everyone some people like like accountability like having volume intensity targets like going in and having structured programs sometimes I just like going in and doing whatever just like just having like a little bit of freedom in my workouts like that's why I like it anyway let's get this fit started all right guys what we're talking about today is chasing the pump so the thing about chasing the pump is basically working to a set threshold where you induce uh, muscle protein synthesis um, muscle swelling you draw a lot of blood to said muscle group you are training and you're training outside your comfort zone, okay? So they, these are all these are all stimuluses basically for muscle hypertrophy. And when if if you've actually been into the gym and you haven't got any like um, intensity targets or volume targets, just get in there and you're just basically doing as many curls as you can until it hurts, until it fills up with blood and you can't do any more. Obviously, training tool failure. Um, like th this is a form of auto regulation. So you're going in the gym, doing as many, many reps as possible on that current day and you're using a weight that's usually outside your comfort zone. You're doing it to fail. So you're going to induce some muscle swelling and some muscle growth. So if you train like this on a regular basis, generally, if you're a, um, newbie or someone who's intermediate, like just been in the lifting game for maybe a few years, this is a really good way to train, especially if you're uh, on a new program or you just um, train each muscle group a few times a week, doing upper body, lower body program or full body, or you're doing a bro workout and you, you, you're uh, doing some new exercises. A perfect way to train. It's an awesome way to get in some volume and a good amount of intensity and you don't have to really hold yourself accountable 120% if you know what I mean. Okay, so with this, obviously, the thing about auto-regulation is basically going in and doing what you can on the day. So when you work out like this, some, day, like some days you'd go and you could bench 100 kilos at 10 reps and you could try back that up the next day and you might only be able to get like, I don't know, six or seven reps out. So you regulate your workouts. So you drop the weight or you up the weight, up the reps, or you drop the reps and up the weight, or you increase at a set or you decrease the sets, add more reps. So you pretty much just change, you change the three pillars of fitness. So when it comes to working out, you've got intensity, frequency, and volume. So you increase one of these and you bring the other two down. So what I like to do and a good form of, um, of chasing the pump, so to say, in which um, Arnold and Muhammad Ali usually follow, like the reps don't count until it starts to hurt. So they'll basically just do push-ups until they actually start feeling the muscle um, contracting and relaxing and it becomes difficult for them to do because for them, they have a set amount of like energy and endurance and strength that their body can actually handle. And then when they reach a certain point, a threshold is when they're going to induce new muscle growth. So this threshold is basically when the muscle is going to swell and you're going to be roughly outside your comfort zone. You're pushing new limits. You're pushing and stressing and um, you're pushing, stressing and just breaking through plateaus, so to say. So... 
Uh, the people like the, a lot of people get into like periodization. You have to do this many reps. You have to do. You have to lift this much weight. You have to do this. You have to do that. Like life's not perfect. This is an awesome way to train. I love to train this way. It's not the most optimal. Obviously, having a said periodized program and getting in volume targets and intensity targets and having said deload weeks and working out each muscle group so many times a week, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what kind of um, periodization model you're following and who's written it for you, um, like your body type, your posture, like all those kinds of things and your goals and your food intake. And But if you're just going to the gym, you're just an average Joe, this is a good way to train. So make sure you're in the gym, stimulating both um, each muscle group a few times a week. So generally, you want to be doing chest two times a week, you want to be doing shoulders two times a week, legs two times a week, and doing biceps, tries, a little bit of back, and some abs two, three times a week. So doing all this with an accumulation of adding on a little bit of weight. So um, if you can do 10 reps on something, like add an extra 2.5 to 10 kilos or whatever exercise is, might be bench press, might be shoulder press. So add a little bit of extra weight onto that, whether that be dumbbells or a barbell. So you're going to add that weight. This is a form of progressive overload. You're going to do as many reps as possible. And this in itself, um, you're, you're creating a new stimulus because you're lifting a weight your body's not used to and you're pushing past a point or a threshold where you're comfortable and your body's used to. So doing this, straining and stressing the muscle, and make sure you're focusing on that time and tension. So down slow, up quick. And if, if you follow these principles and you do train till failure, <laughs> I'm kidding you not, you're going to get awesome results. Like I do this quite regularly. I'm quite lean. I'm quite fit. I'm not the best out there, nor Thor, <laughs> Thor, Thor, I've been watching a little bit of Thor. So pretty much I'm not the best. I'm not the worst, but it, it's, it's a good way to train, especially if you like going to the gym and you like doing high repetition work. Just remember you want to be lifting heavy. You want to be lifting light. So um, have heavy days, have light days, make sure you, you're working out each muscle group a few times a week and get in there, do like a heavy set, do a light set and then do a set where you basically just go to a fail. <laughs>